So could you tell us who you are, where you've studied, and where you've previously worked? Oh, okay. Todd L. Uh, I work at Collins Aerospace. I actually studied at the University of North Dakota. Um, I grew up in North Dakota mm -hmm. for my undergraduate and got my doctorate at the University of Minnesota in control sciences and dynamic systems. And how do your studies translate into what you're currently doing today? Ah, um, my undergraduate doesn't at all, but mm -hmm. <laughs> because my undergraduate is actually elect electrical engineering, but I haven't designed any electric circuits my entire life. So late in that career, I was introduced to control theory, and that's what my doctorate is in, is control sciences and dynamic systems, okay. which is if you want to control something, you have to model it, mm -hmm. and that's where my, all of my focus has been. How do I model real-world systems? And have you always been interested in those kind of things? Oh, yeah. Yep. And how would your 10-year-old self think about what you're currently doing today? I would not have dreamed that I'm doing it today. No? <laughs> I've always been curious, but I didn't. It was more of a question of, well, I need to go to college. Maybe I'll be an engineer. Mm -hmm. um, I've always been driven by curiosity. And so that seemed to fit. And I've always been astounded by the beauty and the intelligibility of what I see. Mm -hmm. So. And how would you tell someone who doesn't have any knowledge about what you're what you do and where you're interested in, how would you explain to them what that exactly is? <laughs> for me, for example. Yes. Yeah. okay. Um, <laughs> let's see. That's a tough question because I don't fit into any of the boxes of a normal engineer. Um, That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I look at the way things behave so that I can model them, okay. so that I can describe them, usually mathematical models. Mm -hmm. And that enables the other engineers to actually design to the target they're trying to get. So if I'm trying to design an algorithm that can, for instance, tell you where you're at on the face of the planet, well then I look into what kind of sensors are available, I model those, how they behave, where their errors are, so that the guy that's designing the navigation algorithms knows what he's getting into. And then we play a game of, for instance, well that sensor's too noisy or there are better ones. You know, well, yeah, but they're too expensive, so make it do with what you got. And so there's this trade okay. between how good of a performance do you want versus how cheap do you want to make it. Mm -hmm. And that's the constant trade-off. That sounds very impressive, if you ask me. <laughs> I don't think I could do that. Uh, but do you think anybody can get into that? Do you think any, like, for me, for example, imagine if I wanted to start tomorrow, like, do you think that's realistic or? Yes, yes. Um, I've always had the stated, I've always understood that anyone can learn what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. The question is, one, how interested are you? Mm -hmm. Are you curious enough to spend the effort to do it? So for me, it was going into a, an engineering field, yeah. so electrical engineering. Then there are a lot of people that just have a bachelor's degree that, that do that, what I just described. I end up at a level up above that because I'm trying to lay out architecture, mm -hmm. which means... Was that advantage then? Pardon? Was that an advantage then for you? Yes. Um, the, the way I describe it is there, there are people that can understand how to solve certain problems, but it takes a somebody with a creative mindset. So, for instance, somebody that understands art, somebody that understands beauty, somebody that, and that gives you the ability to think orchestrationally, meaning I can see the whole breadth of what you're trying to do and visualize how would I solve this, even if just conceptually, to help guide other people to actually bring it together. Do you help people, for instance? Yes. Yeah, yeah I mentor uh, engineers, I mentor high school students. I, um, so Do you I, like that? Do you yes. Like oh, yeah. Yeah, I've, I don't charge for the high school and the grade school because... Do it for free. I do it for free oh. because it's, it, it, it actually increases my ability to understand what I do. Mm -hmm. So in the process of teaching somebody, you know, mm -hmm. optical physics in high school, I actually learn the material better, and I go back to the basics of how does this work, and that actually makes me a better engineer. So, mm -hmm. so because of that, it's anybody that came up to me and said, you know, I got a high schooler that's struggling in math or physics, so I, you know, my only criteria was is yeah. that, for instance, the parent could set up the first meeting, but my rule was. The parent's not there the second time, the third time. Sure. Yes. Up to the student, because mm -hmm. the teacher can only teach if the student wants to listen. <laughs>
Yeah, how long have you, how long have you been doing that for? The mentoring stuff? Yeah. Oh, a couple of decades. So. Are you planning on doing that in the, for a long time in the future? or? Yeah, anybody that shows up says you need help. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll help you. And do you teach a lot of students? Or do you uh, usually, for a while, there was one or two a year. Um, some of them were freshmen in high school. Some of them, I actually, there was one gal I actually tutored all the way into graduate school in mathematics, so yeah. in a college level. So, and, and she got to the point yeah. where I had to tell her parents, like, mm -hmm. she's beyond me now. I can't help her anymore. <laughs> oh, is, is it not like a certain amount of time you teach those students? Is, or no. Is it like, does it depend on the student? Itself? It depends on the student, which is why it's up to the student's uh, motivation to connect with me if you're struggling with something, and we'll sit down. Okay. So, and I usually meet at a coffee shop, or I actually have a real back office in my house. You don't meet like an actual school, like you meet. No, them, like... this is all just word of mouth connection with people. So, I think that's a good idea, actually. Yeah, I think I get I actually of, uh... enjoy doing that quite yeah. a bit. So, and to maybe round this off, for someone who who's considering starting, you know, uh, going into your world, basically, how would you convince them to? join your world? Uh, some of it is what I just talked about in yeah. terms of here is the breadth of things I can work. So I've worked on everything from farm equipment to military weapon to aircraft mm -hmm. to um, uh, submarines. To, so just the breadth is one thing. And even when I'm tutoring, for instance, if it's a math problem, I usually know the historical background of why did they come up with this. Mm -hmm. And so part of it is just engaging curiosity mm -hmm. to say, are you curious about why do logarithms exist? <laughs> and, and understanding the back history of it is actually quite intriguing. And that usually helps quite a bit.